to do what we think we're going to do. Uh, the Bible says, if the Lord wills, you can make plans all you want, but if God doesn't allow it and he stops it, it's over. It's over. And Hebrews says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's if you don't know him. But if you know him, it's, a, it's all right. I'd rather be at peace with him. It's yeah, what would you say? It's a wonderful thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. Let me bring a, a commercial real quick, because this is so sobering, um, that we are on YouTube. I meant to tell you all that we did post to YouTube, uh, and I'll give you the information. It's Pursuit of Wisdom, hashtag Job 13, what are the verses? 20 through 28 are the verses. And so if you ever go into YouTube, type that in search, Pursuit of Wisdom has the channel, and you'll see some of the classes uh, from two weeks ago, some of the uh, excerpts are taken out, and powerful moment. One of, one of the listeners, we have a subscriber, by the way, already, who heard Darla talk about what it's like to have a conversation with God. He said, I wanted the same thing. I, I, I've asked that same question. What is it like to sit down and talk to God like you and I are talking now? How, what type of moment would that be? Don't you have some things you want to ask him? Some things you want to talk to him about? Some things you want to let him know? Like, I think it's not going this way. If you were really in charge, you take care of he had the same thoughts, dog. Same, he said, and that's how powerful that medium is for us to get it out, out outside of these four walls. All right, so watch this. Job gives us a description. Here's what he said. Man is born of a woman, uh, Jimmy, full of full, a few days, few and full, and full of trouble. He has a short life. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth as a shadow and continueth not. You've seen flowers now. I'm watching my wives. What do you have in the front there? That you plant? Mums. And they come back a certain year, and now they're all brown and dead and ugly. And last week, two weeks ago, we talked about the leaves uh, and how much life is like a leaf, and, and the wind can just blow it anywhere as it falls off the tree to be trampled, and people just walk over them, and soon you forget all about them, and they're gone. And Job is equating life like that. But now he says we're like flowers. We bloom, we grow, we look beautiful, and then at some point, we flourish. We're cut down. We're done away with. And, and we're forgotten. All right, so watch this. This is a sobering moment. Verse 3. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such a one and bringest me into judgment with thee. So watch this. He says, comes forth like a flower, is cut down, uh, and flees uh, through life like a shadow. You ever see a shadow? Go here for a moment, go on. Watch Hebrews continues not. Hebrews 9.27 is a sobering verse. Hebrews 9.27. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after death comes the judgment. I can quote it because I, I remember it because it's a frightening thing. You have an appointment. You ever make an appointment and break it? You get charged. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on a doctor's office or whoever. Yeah, but this appointment you will keep. I don't know anyone who has not kept that appointment. So, but it's a reality. And so Hebrews 9 27 says, Am I correct, though? Yeah, it's a, you have an appointment, and God has set the time for us that we will expire. Somebody mentioned the other day when you look at a gravestone, you look at the date they were born and the date they passed, and that's that little dash in between. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about that once before in this class, where, you know, what are people going to talk about when you die? What have you done? What have you left behind? What was your legacy? And mm -hmm. that little dash in between the birth and the death is you. That's wow. your life. Mm -hmm. And what will people talk about yeah. when they see it or think about you? Yeah, great, great moment, great point. Yeah, I remember when my dad had passed, um, Jimmy, I had the, I got the call. We went up to the, to the nursing home here off of Norton, and his eyes were still open mm -hmm. when I got there. Uh, but prior to that, what Russ was talking about, he had a moment with me. He just started talking about stuff that was just off the top of his mind. And I'm wondering what people will think, and I'm wondering what people will say. And this wasn't true. And I'm like, Dad, what are you talking about? Because he was suffering from uh, dementia and Alzheimer's at an early stage. So I thought he had one of those moments, but he was really revealing what was going on as he was approaching death at the very moment. So you can imagine walking in and shutting your parents' eyes like that. Uh, trying to for me, but he knew the Lord. So I was comfortable with where he was going as opposed to him being wrapped in pain and the mental disorder he was going through in that, in that nursing home. Uh, and it was good with me. 
I had no problem with it because we had peace with each other. Uh, and if you ever have disturbances uh, with your loved ones, let me bring in the news class. You want to make peace with them now because tomorrow is not promised. The next hour is not promised. Get it right now because I had one of my brothers uh, literally almost lost his mind over the death of our father because their, their relationship was not the way it should be. They were at odds. And it happens in families. It does. So I want, to, I want to bring you closer to home. Make up with your loved ones. It's not, whatever you're going through, it's not that big of a deal. It's not, not when it comes to this moment. Because then you can't walk up to the casket, and we have a strange habit of doing that, walk up to the casket and start talking to our loved ones as if they could hear us. But it's too late. You want to get that moment right now. And clean the slate and swallow our pride and admit you're sorry, and if you're not sorry, accept them for who they are. And, 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 and cement the relationship in a better way. Because no one knows the hour or the time. But we do know from Hebrews 9, 27, we have an appointment. Amen. All right. So watch this. So let me look here. It says, Job's prayer uh, has three questions in it, verses 3 through 6. Watch these questions. He says, and does thou open thine eyes upon such a one? That's question one. Two, and bringest me into judgment with thee. That's the second question. Here's the third one in verse four. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Um, God considers how frail and fleeting man is. Job is asking him, listen, God, if you're going to bring judgment on me, consider how frail and fleeting man is and then have mercy on me. It's a powerful moment he's having. He says, listen, if you want to bring judgment, I want you to consider, listen, I know I'm not perfect. I know I sin. That's why the word mercy comes into play here. He's asking for God to forgive him and not give him what he deserves. Mercy and grace is so important. We talked about it two weeks ago. Is Mercy is you get what you don't deserve or getting what you don't deserve. Grace is not getting what you, did deserve. What you do deserve. It's a play on words. I have a 